Tom Brady? It, the Tom Brady of 1776. Paul Revere. Hey, I'm Lorraine. And I'm Ryan, and this is Earth's Mightiest Show. Where we talk about all of the biggest stuff in the Marvel Universe that you are hardcore fanning about. Heck yeah, this week we're playing Fight, Marry, Kill, Black Panther style. And Jimmy O. Yang from Silicon Valley swings by. Plus, Jessica Jones herself, Kristen Ritter, reveals a secret onset routine. But first, a couple of things that have everybody freaking out this week. Seriously, like everyone on my feed is talking about Marvel. Oh yeah. Okay, first, there's been an amazing fan reaction to the trailer drop for Marvel Studios' Avengers Infinity War. Yes, and not just about the action, people are flipping out about seeing their favorite Marvel characters finally meet. Marvel was feeling the new snarky twosome, saying they're a genius duo she never knew she needed. Mm. Uh, Kaylee says the interaction between the two is killing her and giving her life. <laughs> and even our very own Captain Marvel writer, Margaret Stoll, hi Margie. Hi Margie. I uh, was tweeting about it saying that she is here for the banter battle. Heck yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Lorraine, what was your favorite moment? Oh, so many feels, so many feels. Um, I love Thanos, and I'm super excited to see Thanos and little Gamora. Aww. Gotta see it. Father-daughter moment, but, like, scary. Yeah, no, it, he's super intense throughout that whole trailer, and then you have those moments, and it's still, like, ominous. But for me, I think it's going to Wakanda, and you see yeah. T'Challa rolling up with Dora and everybody else, all of his people, and then you see Captain America, him rolling up with Black Widow and all of his people, and they come, and it's like, what's up? Eye contact. But that isn't the only thing you guys have been talking about. Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, the new show coming to Freeform this June, revealed its first episode at South by Southwest this weekend, and y'all were raving about yes. it. Meredith Borders got to see the first episode, and she tweeted, Cloak and Dagger is a really smart, mature, visually accomplished Marvel show, and I can't wait to watch more. Super fun having Jeff Loeb on another YA superhero show. Oh, I'm so jealous. I just, I want to see it. Give it to my eyes. That's a promise. I'm people who know people, but if you didn't <laughs> get a chance to pop by South by, don't worry. Here's a clip of season one, episode one of Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. What's wrong? My wallet. It's... Hey, blonde girl. Oh, so good. Tandy and Tyrone, of course, are such an awesome Marvel pairing. There really aren't like a lot of Marvel heroes that have that sort of very intense intertwined power and personality. And it's not just the comics that have that great teen drama sort of feel. I think we're going to see that in this show. Uh, and it faces a lot of serious issues that I'm just excited to see them tackle. Yes, and I mean, that, that's part of what makes the characters and their world so important. So I definitely can't wait to see how Freeform and Marvel Television put their own twist on the story. You guys check it out June 7th. But right now, we've got a great guest fresh from Silicon Valley. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's right. I sat down with actor, <laughs> author, and comedian Jimmy O. Yang, who popped by right here to hang out and play a hilarious game of the most American of American superheroes. Check it out. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jimmy plays Jin Yang on the HBO show uh, Silicon Valley, which comes back March 25th. Very exciting. And you also wrote this little book right here. How's that feel? To be, a, to be an author with your book out there and everything? It feels great. I never thought I would actually be an author. I didn't think I could write. I didn't learn English until I was like 13, so this is, this is big for me. That is incredible to see that journey. And looking through and reading the book and seeing how, you know, your story it's so inspirational. It's so cool. Thank you. Um, how, like, at what point did you know, like, this was your path to being a comedian, a writer, someone doing all these things? 
I'm, I'm not sure if I still know. <laughs> That's the path. I don't know. I think I started doing stand-up not because, like, that was what I was destined to do. That's what I always wanted to do. It was because I didn't want to do whatever my college degree was, which was economics and uh, this finance internship that I just hated so much. So I, all I know is I didn't want to do that. So I was trying to find something different. And I found stand-up, and it was great. It was a community of kind of misfits, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's how I got into stand-up and then eventually acting. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. Hey, do you want to stick around and play a game? Yeah. Cool. All right, Jimmy, we're going to play a little How to American Trivia game. Ooh, okay. All right, so uh, we're going to test your American medal with some relatively obscure American-themed Marvel characters. But don't worry, we have some hints that will help you find the answer. <clears throat> All right, what superhero's name is often used as a phrase for why immigrants come to the U.S.? So sort of people come to the U.S. chasing the... American dream. Boom, nailed it in Oh one. my God, that's Crushed a really it. cool looking character. Yeah, she's awesome. And you did a, that was... Is she like dating Captain America or something like that? Like, do they have a relationship? She's a, an alternate universe Captain America. Oh, okay, that's great. Yeah, she's great. Cause you know when boyfriend and girlfriends, they start dating too long, they start dressing like dressing each other. Dressing alike and yeah, then... Maybe Captain America took after her. Hmm, hmm. possibly. All right, <clears throat> second one. Which patriotic sentiment surrounding the American Revolution is also the name of a colonial costumed superhero? Think of a year? Maybe the year America was uh, sort of launched? The, the decoration. Man, I should really know this. I wrote a book on how to American. Uh, but I never passed high school history, maybe. Let's see, what is this? 1776? That, that's part of it. So you have the feeling of, or the uh, it's a phrase. Patriotism. Tom Brady. It, the Tom Brady of 1776. Paul Revere. <laughs> Close. It is, his name is the Spirit of 76. The Spirit of 76. That sounds like a bourbon. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So you're one and one right now. This one. Third one. Mm -hmm. Which hero's armor looks a whole lot like Iron Man with a more patriotic paint job? <clears throat> How do you get a wrinkle out of your clothing? Iron. Right? Yeah. And uh, the New England Patriots. Yes, yeah, so the Iron Patriot. Oh, the Iron Patriot. You yeah, got it. Of course, course the yes. Iron Patriot, guys. Come on. Nailed it. You know. All right. You got two correct so far. All right. <clears throat> Which Latina superhero with the first name America is actually an immigrant from another dimension? Hint, she also shares her last name with an American union leader named Cesar, who fought for farm workers' labor laws. Cesar Chavez. Yes, and America her... Chavez. Boom. Oh, man. Yes. You are crushing this. I'm. A, she got a nice six pack and a number one medal. That's cool. She is number one. Last one, you're up three to one. So you, you can't lose. You're, you've you already I'm won. Doing this. pretty good. Let's make the last one triple score. Great. We're gambling here. What USA themed superhero carried a shield and fights for the Avengers? Captain America, of course. Yes. My guy. You did it. You crushed it. Oh, my hey, God. Yeah, you guys can clap. Uh, Jimmy, thank you for coming on. How to American is available now. Check it out. Thank you. You're welcome. He did really well. Yeah, I was very impressed by him. He didn't need any help whatsoever for me. I did not give him any answers. That's 100% a lie. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, those questions were pretty hard. I wonder who, who put those questions together, I wonder. Who would have made such difficult questions? Someone who probably has written a book about Marvel, several books about Marvel, works on this show. It, okay, uh, yeah, okay, I might mm. have, I might have written those questions, and I might have made them very hard. Yeah. But you were very kind, and now everyone knows the spirit of 1776. So this is very true. But we weren't just testing Jimmy's comic book knowledge. Langston himself has run over to Midtown Comics to discover yeah. the truth that everyone is dying to know. Which is, if you were forced to face down three of Black Panther's toughest rivals, would you fight, marry, or kill them? Check it out. So, you are a fan of Black Panther. Yes. So, I want to play a game with you. Uh, I want to play fight, marry, kill. You got to fight one of these people, marry one of these people, and kill one of these people. Gotcha. I'm going to use the rivals. Out of these three rivals, you got to pick between Eric Killmonger, Ulysses Claw, and M'Baku. Who do you fight, who do you marry, and who do you kill? I'd like to fight uh, Killmonger. Really? <laughs> Sounds fun, man. I want a challenge, you know? You go, I'll go out swinging, yeah. I mean, marry, I guess, um, I guess M'Baku, just because, you know, he's always after the throne. He's yeah, always after true. it, so, you know, mm -hmm. that, that would be cool. Kill Claw, he's a punk. He's always messing with Wakanda Ooh, and all that stuff, so. you heard that? <laughs> punk. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a punk. punk. I guess I fight Killmonger. That's so strange, because he seems so 
immeasurably dangerous. <laughs> All right, Mary, I'll take Claw. You'll marry Ulysses Claw? Be just because I'm a fan of the 80s Marvel comic books right. a lot. Ooh, I've yeah. actually been reading them recently with my unlimited subscription. Nice. Alert, alert. This was an unsolicited plug, but while we're here, join Marvel Unlimited now. Log on to marvel.com slash unlimited for your account today. And so that means you're going to kill... Uh, M'Baku. Sorry, M'Baku. I'm going to uh, fight... Uh, Mbaku. Mbaku, right. I'm going to uh, marry uh, Ulysses Claw. Oh, <laughs> and he's rich. I mean, listen, you're going to kill the Killmonger. Yeah. I would impale, impale him on some... Uh, uh, what's the vibranium? Just I mean, listen, if you have a strategy, I believe in you. I'll be in your corner. <laughs> I know. Take a deep breath. It's very difficult. It's tough. I want to fight, marry, and kill Killmonger. Well, you can't do that. It's fight, Why Mary. not? Mm, okay. In that order, fight, marry, and then kill. I marry Mbaku Ooh. because then I can get the Wakandan citizenship. I will kill Claw because he already got one hand. <laughs> I mean, like, that's an easy thing. That's, <laughs> that's the criteria? <laughs> it's like, you got one hand. I'm a simple girl with simple needs. <laughs> with simple needs. So I need to kill this one-armed man. Fair enough. That's just it. And um, because... I guess because he's attractive. No, he's super sexy. Don't 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 play. Yeah. Don't even yeah, play. Kill, yeah, no, exactly. Killmonger, even with his weird, like, Willow Jaden Smith hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm still so weirded out that so many people wanted to marry Claw in his like purple jumpsuit. Yeah, and, and he's got the the weird hand with the sound vibro thingies like I don't know it not seems like a bad choice yeah I know but like yeah I I guess you marry Killmonger because he seems like the most dangerous and you just want to keep him close no no that's is that not is that not what marriage is all about we've got Sorry. to talk to Elizabeth <laughs> uh no a hundred percent no but I would hug Killmonger totally he just seems like he needs a hug yeah can we play hug marry fight yes hug 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 <gasps> Hug, hug, hug. I love that game. Yeah. I'm going to play that game all the time. But for now, as promised, we have Kristen Ritter to talk about Marvel's Jessica Jones season two. I'm here with the incredible Kristen Ritter. I'm so excited to talk to you. Congrats yeah. on the new season. Thank you. So nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. Okay, let's get right into it. I think the show does a really great job of conquering these really big issues like trauma and dealing with those kinds of things. Are the, is there a scene from the show this particular season that's really stood out to you as something that sticks with you that you worked on? So. I, I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't Gentle spoil. Spoils. Gentle spoils. Gentle spoils. Okay. Well, okay. So I'll just talk about it in, in, in general terms. I think um, what Melissa Rosenberg and the whole team of writers have done this season is kept things very personal for Jessica Jones. So in looking back at, at her past um, in an effort to move forward, we have to look at some pretty dark corners. Um, so, so that subject matter is, is always challenging slash rewarding to do as an actress. Um, but it definitely, you know, it, it takes its toll. There's definitely some, some real dark places and, and darkness that Jessica carries around with her. Well, luckily you're really good at knitting, so you can just kind of wrap up yep. in something warm and comforting. Yeah, I mean, the knitting has been like my, my vacation from Jessica Jones, and that's kind of what I do to like, it's like my palate cleanser. I love um, that. <laughs> I, got, I used to knit when I was little, mm -hmm. um, and my grandmother taught me, but I got really into it after season one of Jessica Jones. Really? Yeah, it, I, and it was just something that spoke to me, and, and kind of like helped me like get out of that headspace. I love that. Well, and you also get to do some other fun things. Totally. Like you get to do stunts. Totally. And you and we're seeing more and more of Jessica's powers. Yeah. Uh, what has been some of your favorite stuff to do? Oh, I love doing the stunts. I mean, I definitely get banged up. Um, I'm always like texting people, people <laughs> pictures of like my bruises. Um, yeah, you know, it's really fun to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've never had a job where I had to be this physical before mm -hmm. and learn stunts and fight people. And it gives you this this sort of um, inflated self-confidence that you're oh, stronger no, you're like, than you on, are. Come at me. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I, get, um, I get to punch people and, and they usually go flying through, through walls unless there's a misstep and then I take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not too much of that. No. Uh, but you also, you do so many things. I'm always so impressed because I feel like I'm constantly seeing you doing something different. Like you have your knitting kits. Yeah. <laughs> and you've written a novel. Right. Is, is there anything left to conquer or are you just going to hang out with books and knitting? No, no, you know, there's a lot I w want to do. I'm one of those people who is just really a hardcore person. And when I get into something, I, I just 
to, to really get into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of interest in addition to acting. Um, I love being creative and in, in creating things from the ground up. Uh, you also, I know, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything. Okay. But I'm going to ask a spoilery question. All right. Is your dog Mikey or your scooter appearing at any point in Jessica Jones season two? Unfortunately, no. <sighs> I know. I got to find a place for Mikey to at least cameo. There was one scene that there is like a dog walking mm -hmm. across the street, and I was like, Oh my gosh! This is his big moment. <laughs> They're going to ask Mikey. him to be the to play the role, and then they never did. Um, uh, also, Mikey, I don't know. It's such a dangerous environment. Like we do, with the right. stunts and everything. Like I don't know how how that would work. But I would love to find a place for him in the show. Let's and my scooter just, isn't in the show either. Uh, That's just my mode of transportation. Could be <laughs> rolling through New York City. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love my time. scooter. Thank you so much for talking with us. You guys, make sure that you're watching Marvel's Jessica Jones Season 2 right now, only on Netflix. Okay, she was awesome. Kristen Ritter was talking yes. about uh, you, all the cool stuff she does. She loves to knit. And, you know, I know that because I follow her on Twitter and Instagram. She posts pictures of all the stuff she knits, plus her dog. And her Scoot Scoot. I love the Scoot Scoot. It's the best. Got that Scoot Scoot light. Yes, yeah, Scoot Scoot Live, hashtag it. And speaking of hashtags, tell us what you guys think of our show today and our incredible guests on social media and hashtag Earth's Mightiest Show, hashtag Scoot Scoot Life. Yeah, see you all one's next optional. time. <laughs> it's fine. You can put them all on there. All right, I'm Lorraine. I'm Ryan. And this is Marvel. Your universe. Thanks for watching Earth's Mightiest Show. If you like this, please like this and subscribe. Yes, or you can watch the last episode right over there. You know what? Not just or, you better watch the last episode yeah. that's right over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to yeah. get on our scoot scoots and find you and then yeah. show you the show. And, and then, then we're, we're going to knit hot chocolate and, stuff. and play with puppies. Yeah. And we mean it.